Nowadays, I'm often asked about my immense aura. Some people say that my aura is cooked, or I have acoustic aura. I don't know what any of that means, but I'm more curious about what the average aura is. But in order to answer a question like that, we need to understand measures of average. And there are three common measures, the mode, the median, and the mean. And today, I would like to rank these three common averages in terms of aura. Statistics is all about analyzing and learning from sets of data. So let's say we have a set of data. Averages give us a way to measure the center of the data. For example, if we have a set of test scores, the average is giving us an idea of what the typical test score was, which teachers and administrators may be rather interested in. Let's say we have this tiny set of data, one, two, three, four, and four. Now let's make sure we understand how to calculate each type of average. The mean is perhaps the most common type of average, and what it does is takes the data in question, adds it together, one, two, three, four, and four, and then divides by the total number of data points. In this case, there are five data points, so the mean of this data set is 14 divided by five. And so in this case, the mean would be 2.8, which seems fairly representative of the average value in this data set. Now, what about mode? How does mode work? Well, the mode of a data set is just the data point that occurs the most. Clearly, the most frequently occurring data point here is four, which has occurred twice. So the mode is four. Finally, the median. The median of a data set is just the data point in the middle. We see that three is in the middle of this set. There are two numbers to the left and two numbers to the right. Importantly, the data is in order from least to greatest, so we see that number in the middle, which is the median, is three. All right, can you tell which measure of center has the most aura yet? I think to really answer this important question, we should first look at some similar data sets, but with some small changes. Let's say we change this last data point of four to a Five. So now our new data set looks like this. One, two, three, four, five. Now, what are the mean, median, and mode of this new set? Before, the mean was 2.8, but now the calculation is one plus two plus three plus four plus five, adding up all the data points, and then dividing by five, the total number of data points. This is 15 divided by five, which is equal to three. So the mean went from 2.8 to three. It increased by a little bit. This still seems like a decent measure of the center though. Unfortunately for the mode, I would say this is where it falls out of the race for the measure of center with the most aura. The mode has already completely broken down. What's the mode of this data set? Well, it's pretty much a mean meaningless measure of center here because every single data point has occurred only once. So we may say, well, it's five modal. It has five modes. The modes are one, two, three, four, and five. Yes, that's very useful. So yep, I'm gonna have to go minus 100 aura on the mode there. That's not looking good. This is just not a situation where the mode makes any sense at all. Now, what about our friend, the median? Well, the median has not changed at all. The median is still three, which in this case happens to also be the mean. Again, it's just the number in the middle. Okay, let's suppose we make another change to this small data set. Let's say the data points are one, two, three, four, and 1,000. Will this help us investigate which average has the most aura? Well, the mode is already out of the running for max aura. It is actually a really useful measure of center, but for these small data sets, the mode is just not really a useful thing. It's more useful for large data sets and when you're looking at something called a histogram. We'll leave that for another time. All right, what's the mean of our brand spanking new data set? Well, it would just be the sum of the data points, one plus two plus three plus four plus 1,000 divided by the total number of data points. So divided by five. I put approximately here. I should have just put equals to. This is 202. What do you think? Is that a very good measure of center for this data set? 
We would say no, this is an absolutely terrible measure of center for this data set. Most of the data points are between 1 and 4. It's just this one outlier of 1000 that has completely jacked up the mean. And for that, the mean gets minus 1000 aura. Now, let's once more look at our friend the median. What's the median of this data set? Well, it's the number in the middle, which is still 3. The median has not changed a single time. And so for the median, I say plus infinity aura. The median has what statisticians call a robust aura. More generally, if we have a large set of data values, they may be plotted on what's called a histogram. A histogram could look something like this. In a histogram, each bar is just representing the frequency of a certain range of data values. Now, in this histogram, we could look at it and see that the center of the data appears to be over here. But there is this one outlier over here, or it could be a couple outliers, depending on the height of the bar. And outliers like this are going to have a significant impact on the mean. Like we saw, outliers have very little to no impact at all on the median. So the median is what we call robust. It is resistant to outliers, which could just occur naturally in a data set or could be indicative of an error. But it is nice to have have a statistic that is resistant to things like that. Now, if we were trying to summarize this data with numbers instead of with a picture, we would want two things. For one, we would want some measure of center, like the median or the mode. Either one would give us a good idea of the center being around here, where these peaks are in the distribution. But the other thing we would want to know is just how spread out the data is, because it makes a big difference if the center is right here here, but the distribution is not spread out at all, so maybe all of the data is at the center, as opposed to the center being here, but the variation is extremely high, so maybe there's a ton of data on both sides of the center. It's very spread out. We would certainly like our numbers to be able to distinguish between those two situations. So we also need some measure of the spread, or the variation of the data. One of the classic measures of spread is the standard deviation, which for a sample of data, we represent with an S, and it's calculated like this. We have a fraction, in the denominator is n minus 1, where n is the number of data points that we have. And in the numerator, we add up a bunch of stuff. That's what the sigma means, you're adding up a bunch of stuff. What we're adding up is each data point, represented by x, minus the mean of the data set, which is represented by x bar, and that gets squared. And then we also have to take the square root of this. This is the standard deviation, but as you can see, like I said, x bar is the mean. Since this measure of spread contains the mean, do you think it is a robust measure of spread with lots of aura or not? The answer, of course, is that it's not robust. Since it's based on the mean, which is sensitive to outliers, the standard deviation is also quite sensitive to outliers. So in a set of data, if you have some extreme values, it can make the mean, and thus the standard deviation, rather deceiving. But of course, that's where our robust infinite aura friend, the median, comes in. Just like there are robust measures of center, like the median, there are robust measures of spread based on the median. One robust measure of spread is the MAD. It's actually an acronym. It stands for Median Absolute Deviation. The MAD is itself the median of a set of numbers. In particular, it's the median of the absolute values of the data points minus the median. We'll use this X squiggly on top to represent the median. So if we take each data point, subtract the median, and then take the absolute value of that, do that with every data point, the median of all of those absolute values is the median absolute deviation. A measure of spread, the 
that is resistant to outliers. So if we come back to this data set, one, two, three, four, a thousand, a thousand is obviously a huge outlier here and it's very far away from the median. But if we use the median absolute deviation to measure the spread, it shouldn't respond to the 1000 too much. Let's try it. Remember in that data set, our median was three. So we'll write X squiggly is three. Then we have to calculate the absolute values of the differences of each data point with the median. The first data point was one. So we would have one minus three. The absolute value of that is two. The second data point was two. So we would have the absolute value of two minus the median of three. Absolute value of that is one. The third data point was three. So the absolute value of three minus three, which is zero. The fourth data point was four. So we would have the absolute value of four minus three, that's one. And then the last data point was that big 1000. And so we would have the absolute value of 1000 minus three, and that is 997. The median absolute deviation of the data set then is the median of this set of absolute values. Zero, one, one, two, 997. What's the median of these absolute values? It's the number in the middle, which is one. Now, just like the mean of this data set was hugely changed by the 1000, so too would the standard deviation of the data set. I can bust out my limited edition transparent green TI-83 plus to show you this because the calculations are a bit laborious. So I've entered that data, one, two, three, four, a thousand, and then we can tell the calculator to calculate some statistics with that set of data. And what we find is that the standard deviation SX is 446. It's huge, suggesting that there's a ton of variation in the data when really all of the data is close together except for a single data point. Now, if you're taking a statistics course, it's more likely that you would be introduced to the interquartile range as a resistant measure of spread than the median absolute deviation. But that's why I showed you the median absolute deviation because it's just a little bit different from what you would normally see. So this is my final ranking. Median has has most aura, mean has least aura. This is of course all for laughs. Every measure of center has its time and place and there are strategies to make a measure of spread applicable even when it would otherwise be inappropriate. But that's a little bit about mean, median, and mode and resistant statistics, also called robust. Let me know what you think down in the comments and be sure to subscribe for more of the swankiest math videos on the internet. Making it up fast, so slow down, give me the time so I can fake it. Embrace the tune of words and just how I say shit. And let me speak my poetry to your face. It's not in the mid if you ain't listening. Not infinite if you ain't really in the head.